Okay, editing MIDI. So we have our MIDI information recorded. It's not necessarily the, the best and greatest and most perfect thing, so we might want to do some editing. So from a general standpoint, we can edit this information just like we edit our audio information. You'll notice that the default um, playlist view for instrument tracks is regions. So you see we've got all these different options. And regions act just like the waveform regions do. And so if I go and use my trim tool, I can do the same thing. If I want to select a portion and hit duplicate, I can duplicate it in exactly the same way as I did with my MIDI information, my audio information, my audio loops. Okay, it's all pretty much identical. But the real power of MIDI is being able to go beyond that into the notes level. So you could change to notes right here. And now we've got our our notes that we can edit on our track. Okay, we've got to zoom in and stuff like that to get it. But a little easier way to do that, go back to regions and simply double click with the grabber on the region and it's going to open up the MIDI editor. Okay? It's possible that your MIDI editor might have this button pushed which is going to give us a notation view of the MIDI editor. Okay, Noto notation display enable is what it's called. And so we can actually edit the information. Okay, we can edit the information on a staff view. So it's like we're looking at uh, notation paper. Okay, so if we take that off, we're back to our regular MIDI notes view. Now this is sometimes called the piano roll. Um, but basically what we have is we have the keyboard here on the left and then we have the events occurring in time up on top. So I'm going to get rid of this transport here so we can see that below we have the velocity. Okay, So there's a, a handful of things we're going to want to edit. So I'm going to zoom in here, hit T a couple times, and we can see that these are all individual notes and I can just grab a note and I can move it around wherever I want. You'll notice I'm in slip mode. If I was in grid mode, it would lock to the grid. Okay. And while I'm moving these around, I, I'm changing the performance. Okay. So I could change that to be a different note. And now, okay, now I got a bad note. So maybe I'd accidentally hit that note. And I can come in here and I can say, no, that's not supposed to be an E natural. It's supposed to be an E flat. And I can make that change right here. Okay. I can also make it happen later or earlier in time. I can make it last longer as well. Okay. Okay. So it's as if I held on to the note for longer. Okay. I can also adjust the velocity. So this is how hard it's hit. And you'll notice that the numbers in MIDI are really 0 to 127, sometimes 1 to 128. But 0 to 127, that has to do with the binary basis of the MIDI signal and using 7 bits to, to send that signal, which has 128 different options. But anyways, if I just lost you there, let's get back to normal speak. So basically, that 0 to 127, you're going to see all the time. And on velocity... 127 is the hardest you can hit a note, and 0, of course, is the softest. Okay, they don't really have a 0 because it's not being hit on velocity, so the first one is a 1. Okay, so you'll notice that it's not only getting louder, but it's getting as if it, it, it's, it's as if it is hit harder. Okay, velocity is not just volume. It's how hard the note is hit. Okay, so on a piano, if you hit the note harder, that hammer goes and hits that string harder, and it actually sounds brighter and has a, a different kind of attack. Okay, so you can see we could we can go in and we can edit every little piece of information about the note. So maybe this one was, you know, not hit quite as hard. We can adjust that. Maybe this one was hit too hard. Okay, and then of course. We can go and select multiple notes with our with our smart tool 
when we're not clicked on anything, we have this crosshair, which is kind of from the grabber. And you can grab multiple notes and move them all at once. You can even draw around the velocity stalks and do that. Okay, but you can see that my smart tool is very smart here in my MIDI editor as well. So if I go onto the note, I get my grabber. If I go towards the front or the end of the note, I get my trim tool. And then of course, I get my my selector tool crosshairs when I'm not clicked on a note. Okay, I can actually get my my selector tool as well if I want to. I've got to hold the option key and I can change my tool. You'll notice and you should really try this as you as you experiment is as you hold these modifier keys, command, option, control and shift or control alt Windows and Shift on a Windows machine, you'll notice that they will change your tool and, and suspend your tool or suspend your mode. Remember we talked about grid mode, suspending to slip mode by holding the command key. So you'll see that if I hold the control key, I actually get a pencil and I can add a note. Okay. So, and command still works the same if I'm in grid mode, it'll suspend it. And if I'm on a note, I can actually adjust the velocity right there from the note without having to go down. So if I hold command, I have quick access to controlling my velocity. Okay? And then another thing I like to do too is if I double click on a note, it will delete. So I'll hit undo, double click, deletes it, hit undo again. I can just select it like I've done and hit the delete key and it's gone. Okay? So lots of little things there. I know I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you, but we just want to get all that information out there and you can start playing with this stuff, okay? So there are a bunch of MIDI editing options that will process all of the MIDI in one way or another at once, okay? So I'm going to hit Command-A or Control-A on a PC to um, select all of my MIDI notes. A for all, of course. Okay, and if I go to event, I've got event operations, and these are all my MIDI event operations, and they don't call it MIDI event operations anymore because we'll find out in a little while that there's elastic audio, where we can do a lot of these things to our audio regions as well, which is pretty dang cool. Okay, so we have quantize, change velocity, change duration, transpose. We can just transpose everything all at once, you know, by a certain amount select and split notes, input quantize, all these great things. We don't have time to go through all of them, but I would suggest playing around with these and figuring out what some do. Okay, so quantize is going to be a, more, a really powerful tool. Okay, so what quantize does is it's going to take all of these imperfect notes and it's going to place them on a grid. So you can see how this was, this note was before the grid value there. So if I go ahead and hit apply, Notice that it has put the notes exactly on the bar. Okay, you hear that? Now it's exactly on the beat. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. It depends on what the style of music is, what the part is. Sometimes you want stuff to be exact, and sometimes you want a human feel. So if we go ahead and hit undo, you can see that that took it back off the grid. And one of the strongest, and no pun intended, strongest tools here or functions in Quantize is the strength feature. So the way this works is the default is 100%. So it's going to take it 100% of the way there to the grid. So if I change that to 50%, it's going to quantize it by half, quantize it halfway to the grid. So it's going to take, instead of moving it from here to here, it's going to move it from here to here. So watch, we hit apply, and it goes halfway there. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so by doing, by changing the percentage of the strength, you can make it more on the beat, but still maintain some of the human characteristics that came with the performance. So if I go 70%, hit apply, <laughs> apply, 
now I can maintain some of the human feel that I had with my performance while still making it a little tighter and a little bit more on the beat. Okay? So there's there's a lot more here to to quantize, but right now I'm just getting you started with it so you can you can start doing some quantizing, but that's what I would start with is is uh first of all what the grid is and that's what the which lines you're quantizing to and the strength, okay? And we may adjust the grid a little later on. Okay? So that will be what we need for editing MIDI information. And we'll learn about this more as we go on in the next videos.